my wife paid for a massage even though I told her not to be intimate with another man, now everyone is saying divorcing her is stupid and that I'm going too far. For some context, my soon-to-be ex-wife and I are both in our late 30s, and we've been together for 12 years and married for 10. We don't smash anymore, and I'd say our bedroom life is the equivalent of a barren wasteland. It was completely dry for 6 months before I filed for divorce, and it was on life support for 5-6 to six years before that. We both wanted to be younger parents and wanted two kids, and we conceived our daughter almost immediately after getting married. When she was six months old, we started trying to have the second child. It never happened. After three years, we started seeing fertility specialists and found out we both have pretty serious reproductive issues. The doctor told us our daughter was nothing short of a miracle and said it was against all odds that we not only conceived but carried to term. It was after this that our bedroom life began to seriously decline. Initially, I thought it was just the pain of finding out and knowing we wouldn't be able to afford the fertility options, and figured it would get better over time. It never did, it only got worse. Five years ago, I would say we smashed 15 to 20 times that year, in 2023, we smashed three times. I have tried everything to improve this, spicing things up, talking, suggesting counseling. I more than pull my weight around the house. We both work and work basically the same hours. I'm telling you this because the usual stuff I read on Reddit about how the wife does it all is not even close to true. Over time, I have grown more and more resentful. The thing that makes me the most resentful is that she knows I have a high bedroom drive and just doesn't care. I, on the other hand, know she loves to be massaged and never withhold that from her. I probably massage her around 325 times a year. Almost every night, I will massage her calves, shins, ankles, and feet. Four to five nights a month, I will go big and give her a full body massage. I noticed that giving these extensive massages was the best way to lead to smashing. I did them more often a few years ago, but not as much now. The success rate was never that great, maybe 20% of the time, but in the last two years, we are definitely in the single digits. When we hit the four-month mark of absolutely no smashing, I decided I wasn't going to massage her ever again. It only took three days for her to notice, and she asked me too. I told her no, and I got angry. I said, why should I, when you don't give a damn about what I want? Obviously, not my finest moment, and a huge argument followed. Things got ice cold at home, but I wasn't giving in, I was tired of all of it. A few weeks ago, she told me, fine, I will just start seeing a professional masseuse. I replied, then I will start seeing smash workers. That's cheating. Fine, I won't, but you will not get a massage from anyone else, that is also cheating. You're being ridiculous. No, it's being touched in an intimate way by another person. If I can't have that, neither can you, and I swear to God if you do, I will file for divorce that day. The following weekend, she went to get her nails done. I knew how long it takes for her to get her nails done. She came back almost an hour and a half later than I expected. She didn't say anything, she just acted normal. I checked her credit card app on my phone, and sure enough, there was a $95 charge to the massage therapist in the same strip mall as the nail salon. I lost it, and when I did, so did she. I think we both let out years of frustration on each other. True to my word, though, I called a divorce lawyer on Monday. The only part that upset me was when my lawyer said, based on these circumstances, I couldn't list infidelity as the reason for divorce and had to go with irreconcilable differences. Anyway, she has been telling people we are divorcing because she got a massage. Since then, I have had a number of family members and friends call me and say I'm a jerk. Some of them, even when I tell them my real reasons, still think I'm a jerk and that my reasons aren't good enough. Personally, I think getting a massage when told not to is plenty of reasoning. Personal note, I reread this, and I know it comes off angry. But I am angry, angry at myself for wasting so many years. But I'm also angry because this was just the ultimate screw you, she just went and did it anyway and didn't even try to hide it. Literally went to the same place next to the nail salon and used her credit card, which I pay, like I wasn't going to see the charge. Edit. Most of you are correct, this isn't about a massage. I could honestly care less about the massage. That was simply what I fixated on after I finally broke. Now, to those who like to ride the assumption train or, for some reason, just create your own narrative based on who knows what, I did not just massage my wife to smash. I did this for her nearly 300 times a year, nearly our entire relationship. I did it back when we used to smash 10 to 15 times a month, back when it still felt like we loved each other, back when she would put in effort in our relationship. The full massages just became the only way to get the chance of smashing above zero. The small leg ones were never escalated by me and were far more common. Since most people bashing me decided to skim over or ignore the short, vague list of all I tried over the years, here's a more comprehensive account, date nights, weekend vacations, love letters, and even long conversations where I laid out all my feelings. I'll give her credit, she never did promise to do better, just told me she understands where I'm coming from, guess I should've understood then that meant she didn't care. I also suggested counseling five times, and I even booked us once and ended up going to the first two sessions by myself. When she said she was too busy to go to the third, I just cancelled and never went back. Yes, the day-to-day -day routine stuff is pretty balanced, as far as housework and careers go, and I think we are both great parents. But our relationship was one-sided. It took me a long time to see it so boldly and to stop accepting it. If she wants a snack, 
she doesn't get it, she asks me too. Same with drinks. If she wanted to go out with friends, sure honey, no problem, go ahead, I got the girl, just worry about you. If I do, it's a two hour prep for me to make sure nothing's going to go wrong while I'm out. A couple of years ago, I saw a clip of a comedian talking about being out golfing when his wife wanted to watch a DVD, and everyone's laughing as he's describing the whole conversation. I just wanted to bawl my eyes out because that was my life. I just stopped trying to even go out, it wasn't worth the effort anymore. Yeah, we had other forms of intimacy. We cuddled at bedtime to fall asleep. She never really liked kissing or hand-holding, so I wrote those off back when times were good. So I had cuddling, and on the very rare occasion, smashing to look forward to. Now let's flip this over. Besides the near daily massages, it's also pretty common for me to brush her hair, she likes that and will ask for it, then painting her toenails a few times, and back scratching is also pretty common, oh, and usually, I draw her a bath after she works out. Does that count as intimacy, or is that just more of only doing things to please her? I guess I am the jerk. I'm the jerk to myself for putting up with this for so long. And I get it, you're all right, we both have unprocessed trauma from having our dreams dashed, but I didn't quit. I honestly didn't berate her emotionally because of this. I knew she was having a hard time. Yeah, I let my frustrations or disappointment show sometimes, but I didn't get angry. Not until now, not until I had that bad day, and she said, well, tomorrow will be better. Can you massage me? The sick thing is, I felt totally dismissed and still did it anyway. After, I was so angry I just decided I'm never rubbing her again. And I've been angry ever since. Even now typing this has put me in a full rage. No, I really don't give a damn about the massage. It was just the final screw you of our marriage. Update 1. While this is not official by any means at this point, I'll take it as a positive. My soon-to-be ex asked me to meet yesterday to hash out some details of the divorce, and it was actually pretty productive. We agreed on a 50-50 custody arrangement, basically week there, week here, and it becomes two weeks during summer break. We each keep our own retirements, splitting the savings 60 to 40 in her favor, and we each keep our primary vehicle. I made a huge concession on the house, it was my idea. I want our child to grow up in that house. Ours was a three-bedroom with a finished basement and a nice yard. I don't want her to live in a pair of two-bedroom apartments. This is important to me, and I'll be paying housing alimony each month to offset some costs, since my rent and projected utilities, etc., are much lower than the mortgage, utilities, and upkeep. We did agree on some stipulations that would end that. One being if another adult moves in, like a boyfriend or new husband, then my obligation ends immediately. My obligation also ends when our daughter moves out or turns 22, whichever comes first. There are a bunch of different scenarios we talked about in terms of splitting the house if she wishes to sell it. I won't bore you with all of that, but basically, as long as I continue to make the alimony payment, I'll get 40% at the time of sale or a buyout. I'm turning all this over to my lawyer this week, and he will write it up and send it to her lawyer. While she definitely had a you are beneath me vibe during our meeting, I'm happy this doesn't look like it will be an ugly divorce as I was very worried it would be. I assume our daughter is the motivating factor for her sudden amicable attitude. Edit. Well, that didn't last long. My lawyer called first thing this morning. Wife changed her mind, rejecting all the house stuff we talked about. She says she wants to sell and move into something smaller. She is only rejecting the house agreements, the custody agreement is not being rejected. I told my lawyer, fine, I'm done. Then I gave him the offer from my side, 50-50 custody, 50-50 split of house sale. I'll still go 60-40 on savings. I know some of you say this is dumb and unfair, but I have my reasons, and they all revolve around our daughter. I'm actually fine with this, not even upset that she wasted 4 hours of our time on Saturday. Just ready to be done. After my initial tirade, I have really come into a good place. It's like I spent years carrying around a backpack of stones, and I finally decided to put it down. Commenter. I don't understand the 60-40 savings. If it revolves around your daughter, and you're 50-50 on custody, you having the money is the same as your wife having it, unless she has more responsible spending practices or something. Okay, I have paid all the bills our whole marriage. I don't mean my money, we both work. I mean I have been the person in charge of making sure things get paid. I also don't really spend a lot on myself month to month. Sure, I do some, but she is definitely more of a spender. I'd rather give her some more buffer while she learns how to manage finances, because yeah, I think she's going to mess up. Maybe I'm wrong, but this woman hasn't thought about bills or budgets in years. And I don't mean to say she is irresponsible, she's not. She wasn't a crazy spender or anything. Maybe I'm being irrationally accommodating. Also, I really need to stress we aren't rich people. This isn't some gigantic amount of money we're debating here. In all honesty, if she feels like she's winning and we divorce faster, I'll consider it money well spent.